good morning. A warm welcome to Our Lady of Africa Parish. The salt of God's kingdom for all. Jesus used the image of salt to describe the transforming effect of God's work in our lives and how the Holy Spirit wants to work through us to bring the power and blessings of God's kingdom to others. As salt purifies, preserves, and produces rich flavor for our daily food, we too, as disciples of Jesus, are salt for the world. This morning, before the procession, we are remembering those who have gone on before us. Please stand and join us for our libation ceremony. We will pour water into soil as an offering in worship or veneration. We venerate our ancestors because they are a source and symbol of our lineage, models of ethical life, service and social achievements to the community and spiritual intercessors between humans and our Creator. To honor the ancestors is to honor the blessed ones who have achieved immortality based on their good and righteous life on earth. And now, we pour a libation in honor of Sister Dia Bowman. She was born on December 29, 1937 in Yahoo City, Mississippi. She was a Roman Catholic nun, inspirational speaker, teacher, and scholar who helped pave the way for her fellow Americans to participate in the ministry of the Catholic Church. She was instrumental in founding the National Black Sisters Conference to promote and support for African American women in Catholic religious institutes and played a great role in the publication of the 1987 Legally Guided Catholic Hymnal. For this, we pour libation. Father Cole, Father Mae Graham, Father 
For this, we pour life in. And now we welcome our ministerial team for this day's Holy Mass and ask that you join us in singing our gathering song, This the Life. That is found number him number six three seven.
forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ, Him and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words or wisdom. demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Our first reading today is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And actually, the book of the prophet Isaiah has like three main sections to it. And this is what they call the last section, which, mean it, which means it could have been a, a, a co-writer with Isaiah. By the time this section was written, Isaiah had probably died. So this could have been an understudy of Isaiah. 
but it still fits with the message of the prophet Isaiah. This is what we hear today. Share your bread with the hungry. Shelter the oppressed and the homeless. Clothe the naked when you see them. Do not turn your back on your own. Then your light will break forth. It challenges us always to ask ourselves, how are we living that light in this troubled world? Isaiah goes on to say, remove from your midst oppression. And we know that everyone in the African American community has faced oppression. Remove from your midst false accusation and malicious speech. We know sometimes we've all practiced that. But Isaiah goes on to say, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, your light shall rise no matter what darkness surrounds you. And we know how much darkness is in our present world. Jesus, in the Gospel today, says, You are salt, and you are light. You are not becoming salt, or simply being called to become light, but you are salt, you are light, right now, even if you don't think you are. What does Jesus mean when he calls his disciples salt of the earth? Barbara Reed, a scripture scholar, explains that salt in the ancient world was a critical necessity used to season, preserve, and purify foods. It was used to ratify covenants for liturgical purposes and to signal friendship and loyalty. To Jesus' followers at the time, the integral and multifaceted nature of salt would have been evident. Barbara Reed continues to write that like salt, disciples preserve, purify, and judge, drawing out the Savior of God's love in the world. The call to discipleship is not a straight, simple path. This is what Jesus is calling us to now, discipleship. But it's not a straight, simple path. Rather, it is complex and personal. And the actions of a disciple must be discerned. Our share Call, our shared call to discipleship bonds us, yet we are put to use in seasoning the message of God's love in many varied ways. Recall that these metaphors of salt and light come just after Jesus has proclaimed the Beatitudes in Matthew's Gospel. The Beatitudes are blessings, but it's about having an attitude with those blessings in your life. He has just artic articulated blessings last week upon those often overlooked. The meek, the peacemakers, the persecutors. And now he dubs his disciples salt and light. 
You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden. Each member of the body of Christ offers their personal gifts, lives their callings, seasons the gospel message in their own way. It may be tempting to live our faith in private, but Jesus likens this to hiding our light from a world so desperately in need. The light spoken of in today's gospel is not a spotlight focused on us, but rather a soft and sacred light that points toward Christ, the true source and light of the world. This light cannot be contained. We cannot hide in Christ's light. Christians must engage the work of the gospel, such as the works of mercy described by the prophet Isaiah. Then and only then will our light break forth like the dawn. We are, each of us, salt and light influencing the world and those around us even when we do not see or feel it. Our offerings must point others toward God, for all glory belongs to God. Each one of us is called to consider how we personally might dig deeper into the mission set before us as a church. Servant of God, Sister Thea Bowman, is an excellent model of unapologetic, joyful presence as salt and light in the world. In a well-known speech in 1989, to the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops on what it means to be black and Catholic, Sister Thea said, what does it mean to be black and Catholic? It means that I come to my church fully functioning. I bring myself, my black self, all that I am, all that I have, and all that I hope to become. I bring my whole history, traditions, my experience, my culture, my African-American song and dance and gesture and movement and teaching and preaching and healing and responsibilities as gifts to the Catholic Church. Sister Thea might have well have asked, what does it mean to be salt and light? The responsibility is on each disciple to bring their full selves forward. And it is on the church to welcome the gifts and callings of a diverse global community. For each of us to bring our full selves to this church, we must create space and welcome differences. And we're still learning that even to this day. Particularly those situations that have been points of discrimination or marginalization in our church's history. We know our church has a long history of even having slaves. Religious orders had even had slaves. And now they're trying to make reparations for that. We've been on a long journey in this Catholic Church. Father Augustus Tolton had that long journey as well. He was, he 
could even study in the United States in a seminary here when he wanted to become a priest. He had to go to Rome to study. And after that, he thought he would go to Africa as a missionary. But the Cardinal ordained him on Easter Sunday, and the next day he told him, you have to go back and serve your people in the United States. And he came back to Quincy, Illinois, and he became a wonderful, popular preacher. He became so popular that his church was integrated with white and black people. He welcomed everybody. But then the priests around him didn't like it. And that forced him to leave to come to Chicago. Sister Thea Bowman did not give up. Father Augustus Colton give up. And we should never give up, no matter what discrimination we face. It is still all around us in so many ways, even if it is subtle today. While we are all light, called to bring attention to the true light of the world, we do not shine in the same way. We each bring our own gifts and talents. We each bring our own uniqueness. God created us with differences and calls us to engage the world through many vantage points. May we respond even in these dark and challenging times where we know that discrimination still exists, where racism still exists, may we still respond with our light and with the gift of our whole selves. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Because God is always with us, and God will leave us alone. Amen. Let us stand and pray our profession of faith. It can be found on the Mass Responsorial and Prayers or in our Seasonal Missalette on page 66. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God responds when we ask for what we need. Let us offer our petitions with confidence.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life 
and the chalice of blessing, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop and all the ministers of your gospel. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Venerable Father Augustus Tolton, Servant of God, Sister Thea Bowman, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
O oh God, who had willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Bishop Perry will celebrate our African American Heritage Mass next Sunday at 11.30. We invite everyone to wear their cultural dress next Sunday and throughout the month of February. In today's bulletin, there are a list of preachers and events happening for Black History Month. They are all listed in the bulletin. Please take a copy of the bulletin with you. There is an art show in the parish hall by our parishioners Larry Cope and Alan Hicks. Please feel free to view this art show throughout the month of February. Also, immediately following this Mass, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. A lot of 
do look familiar, but I have no idea who you are. And I know you don't know me. So, in the spirit of Ubuntu, a South African word meaning stronger together, let's gather together downstairs in the church hall and have some coffee and maybe a donut or some banana bread and talk. Our family grew by leaps and bounds. We were one, then we were five, and now we're one again. And we don't even know each other. So come on downstairs. Let's meet each other. I've got cousins and aunts and uncles out there whose names I don't know. I need to know. So meet me downstairs for some coffee and a little soup. Each year at this time, we're asked to make a pledge to the annual Catholic appeal in the Archdiocese of Chicago. And there's a brochure about it with an envelope on the usher's table, and the usher's table can, uh, the ushers can give them to you as you leave today. And we ask you to prayerfully consider a donation to the annual Catholic appeal. This donation can be given over 12 months, so it is not something you would have to give all at once. But the explanation about it and the envelope is contained in this brochure. So please take an envelope and brochure with you, and then we ask you to give it back by February 19th. Bring it back and drop it in the regular collection basket. Thank you for prayerfully considering a donation to this annual Catholic Appeal. It makes a difference for us each year. Deacon Foggy and I will offer a blessing of throats at the end of Mass today. The uh, servers and the readers and the cross-bearer will leave but we'll be up here in the front remaining so we can offer you both, offer you all a blessing of throats at the end of Mass today. And finally, you received the prayer for American, African American families when you entered today, and we want to pray this prayer together at this time. Together let us pray. God of mercy and love, we pray for our African American and African families before you today. May we be proud of our history and never forget who paid a great price for our liberation. Help us to live for you and not for ourselves. And may we cherish and proclaim the gift of life. Bless our parents, guardians, and grandparents, relatives, and friends. Give us the amazing grace to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Help us as your children to live in such a way that the beauty and greatness of authentic love is reflected in all that we say and do. Bless our departed family members and friends. May they be led into the light of our dwelling place where we will never grow old, where we will share the fullness of redemption and shout the victory for all eternity. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior, and blessed assurance. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of our families, pray for us.
Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass has been. Thanks be to God. Please join us in our closing hymn, Lead Me, Guide Me, hymn number 538. 538, Lead Me, Guide Me.
Oh, no. 